Hi, 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 hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So I know this is a different setting, yes I know, but I am in my country Botswana and when I say it is hot, I mean it is blazing hot guys, like it's so hot, it is, it's just so hot, but I'm not complaining, I know it's, I keep on saying it's hot, but I'm not complaining, I definitely would choose this heat over the cold that I'm suffering with in my city in China. I would choose heat over anything. But um, today I am bringing you a different kind of video. This video is sponsored by China Matters. And for more information about what they do, what are they about, you can check out the YouTube channel. I'm going to leave the link down below so you can go check out their content and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to answer some questions. I have 13 questions here that I have to answer. So I'm sorry if I keep looking down the answers to the questions. The questions are in my phone, so yeah. The first question is how much do you know about China? Honestly, okay, how much do I know about China? Um out of hundred percent, I think I know only fifty percent about China. And um that is just being like the basic things about the president different kinds of presidents, about the the different dynasties, about the Great Wall, the Yellow River, and all the history. That this just the basic history that you can learn about in a museum. But about the deep stuff, um, no, not really. <laughs> um, okay, number two. What do you find most interesting about China? Oh my gosh, there's a lot. Really, there's a lot. Um, I love that they love their culture. I love that they they put the culture in almost everything that they create. You can see it in their paintings, their buildings, their um, just the way they behave. Um, culture is, you know, woven into their life, and that's what I really love. Um, if you compare China's culture to different kinds of um, countries, some countries are kind of losing their culture, especially with the youth. But with China, it's not really like that. Um, you can see their culture in, and the, you can see a little bit of their culture in, in everything that they do. So that's what I really love about them. Um, what is a common misconception that you have heard about China? Now, I asked my sister about this question. The most misconception is that everything in China is fake. No, that is not true. Everything in China is not really fake. It's just because it is made in China and. China has this reputation of making replicas of things, um, but it's not that everything is fake. Um, I think you know when you when it comes to things like iPhones and gadgets and stuff, Chinese really love like original things, and they have their own version. It's a Chinese version of the iPhone, if you don't know. And you cannot say that it's fake. It's not fake. It is. It is. Um. It's just their version, but it is under Apple. So you cannot really say it's, it's fake, can you? I don't know. There's an American version. There's a Japanese version. There's also a Chinese version. So just because it's a Chinese version doesn't mean it's fake. Okay. And what else? Um. The other misconception I had about China is that they eat babies and dogs and other funny things but um, I'm not going to fall into that when it comes to dogs um, I thought like it was just a Chinese delicacy that everybody eats that you know um, I thought it was just like chicken to them but that is so not true that everybody eats dogs some people actually love dogs as pets and so it's not it's not really like that it's not it's not like that um, about the babies, before I came to China, I heard Chinese have this thing of eating like um, unborn babies or babies that have been aborted. But um, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. And other funny things, um, it's basically just a small percentage. So it's not fully false, but the way I thought about it is it's not actually that way. Um, it's just a small percentage of people that actually do things and 
you can't really allow one apple, one bad apple to, you know, ruin the whole batch. So it's not really like that. Name one industry that you think China is leading. I would say it's leading in infrastructure. In my country, Chinese are the ones that built the roads, the ones that built the... Yeah! Chinese are the ones that built, I'm so sorry. Chinese are the ones that built our roads and the buildings, the main buildings, the skyscrapers and all that. And I think it is very, uh, I would say it's number one. It's number one. And um, yeah, even in China itself, uh, it doesn't take a building much long to build as compared to in Africa. Skyscrapers would take normally 10 years to build here but in China it would take less than two years to be honest two to three years to build a full skyscraper and that's what fascinates me about Chinese I would say maybe because of their population but I'd also say because of their drive they're self-driven they are they have goals you know they are very straight to the point and that's what I love about them okay the next question is what do you think they should teach Chinese students in school but don't Okay, what I think is not taught enough in Chinese schools is sex education. And um, and I really think it is frowned upon, they shy, they tend to shy away from sex education. And this is because there's this one time I saw a 16 year old girl pregnant and her Weibo, her Weibo account or something, her Chinese, one of her Chinese accounts got um, went viral because she was documenting her pregnancy with her boyfriend or husband that's what she called her partner she called her partner her husband um yet you know that in china it is not allowed to you're not allowed to be married by 16 so obviously they're not married um but she got a lot of backlash because she was documenting it she was just happy about her pregnancy but she was 16 she was really young at the time i saw it so I think she got a lot of backlash because Chinese are not um, exposed to sex education while they're in school. They're not shown what is right and what is wrong and what is expected of them and um, what they shouldn't be ashamed of and what they sh you know. It's not, they, they're not really taught the way most people are taught out of China. So I think that sex education is what needs to be you know taught in high school and what is and it's not it's not really taught the way it should be so yeah i hope you understand what i, what I mean yeah i'm so sorry about the kids outside they're kind of distracting me so i'm kind of like all over the place but um i hope you get what i'm trying to say uh okay uh if you could change one thing about China, what would it, what would you change and why? Um, what I would change is exposure to international world. I think it, it's coming up. China is really coming up with that. Um, when I came to my school, I would, we were really, really like a few, really few students. We were less than. 300. We were less than 200. We were less than 200 foreign students. And now we are over 1,000 students, I think. Do you think China create, do you think China helps to create global systems? Why or why not? Um, definitely not. Um, why I say this is because if you have lived in China, you, you realize that China is its own world. Um, the fact that VP, we need VPN to access YouTube, Facebook, Google, um, basic internet use is monitored, um, shows you that it is not creating global citizens. And what I understand by global citizens is a citizen of the world, basically. You have no boundaries, you don't consider yourself as a citizen of a particular country. You consider yourself as a, uh, you consider yourself and other people as human beings of the world. 
um, they even with speaking English, um, English is not taught in all the schools. English is provided as a club, basically. Like you can you can go for chess club, you can go for um, scouts club, and there's also English club. Some schools offer English as an English club. And some schools do offer English, but as a second language, obviously, and it is not like enforced into the school system and all those things. It's not like a basic necessity that you have to do English. So I don't understand how you can call that kind of person a global citizen. Um, you can compare Chinese that have gone out of the country or grew up out of the country, like in America, Australia, and basically just any other country besides China. There is a big difference. You can see that they um, understand English, they are more open to the Western culture, and they, they basically know how to interact with other people that are not Chinese. So that is why I would say China is not creating global systems. Um, they can start by opening the internet um, and allowing us to use the internet without VPN and maybe then I can say you're trying to create systems. Otherwise, I'd say no. What happens at the annual two sessions in China's political calendar? So what I managed to come up with is that China's government actually meets every year, once a year, and to talk about the progress of China, how far it has come, and what the future holds for them and how they can guide China into the right path. I think this is very important because guiding China into the right path is very important for China itself and essentially the world. So I think that's very good. Okay, the next question is how has my views changed of China over time? Um Let's see, I would have never, <laughs> believe it or not, I would have never jumped up living in China, but I do now. Why? Because China is growing. If you didn't know, now you know. China is growing rapidly, it's growing very fast, and I believe China is the future of the world. And why I say this is because if you see, if you just come visit China, to visit Beijing, visit Shanghai, visit Guangzhou, you can get a glimpse of what I'm talking about. The infrastructure, the way of living, the work ethic, everything about Chinese is just, it's, it's, it's powerful, it's great. Um, and as I'm living here, I'm able to pick a few things that I have, I do want, I plan on implementing in my own life. So um, over time, I've also seen that Chinese are very hardworking people and I love the work ethic, that work ethic and so far I've managed to put a little bit of that in my life and try to be more self-driven. My, my views of, of China have also changed because of the way they're accepting the Western culture more. Um, they're more open to um, foreigners, they're more open to foreigners as you can see. The rate at which foreign students are coming into China is just, it's, it's out of the roof. It's, it's through the roof, it's too much. Um, and it has allowed me to see that China is actually opening its doors to people. Um, visa, visa application, visa processing is so much easier now. Um, so, you know, I'm more open to living here. The only problem is, I <laughs> problem. The only problem I'd say is the language barrier. Um, I wish, pe I wish Chinese could implement English more into their education system as well. Um, yeah, that is something I think they should also add into the education system. It's English. They don't push it as much as. I'd like them to. So yeah, number nine. If you could change one thing about China, what would you change? I would definitely change how they take English for granted, the English language, yes. Um, 
you know, if Chinese could speak English more fluently, if they were taught more, if they could take English more seriously, I would definitely live in China. No, not even having to think twice, I'd definitely live in China. Um, the reason why I wouldn't live in China now is because of the Chinese language. What's one thing in China you've been needing to do but haven't gotten up to do? Um, I would <laughs> I would love to visit the Great Wall. I've never seen the Great Wall, believe it or not. And I live four hours away from Beijing. I don't know, I'm just... I think I'm just saving it for just before I graduate or just after I graduate before I have to leave China. The Great Wall hasn't really been my interest, but I definitely want to do it before I graduate. Um, I'd also love to go to the. Um, I'd also love to visit Harbin. Harbin is very cold. I know it's very, very cold. Everybody says Harbin is so cold. And if you know me, I hate cold. I hate being cold. I just hate cold weather in general. So I don't know how I'd survive in Harbin. I just don't know. But I'd love to just experience it and I heard it's very very beautiful and it snows. They have like these amazing ice sculptures and ice houses and the house is made out of ice and building made out of ice. I mean, I think that would be magical but I really just be freezing but I'd just love to experience that. So basically, the Great Wall and Harbin are two things that I'd love to do before I graduate, before I have to leave China for good. What is one amazing thing you can do in China that you can do? What is one amazing thing you can do in China that you can do anywhere else? Um, let me see. Mm, let me see. I think. Oh yeah, yeah. You can ride the fastest train in the world in China, in Shanghai, China. And I was fortunate enough to be able to um, experience it. Uh, what's it called? Yeah, it's called the Maglev chain. The Maglev chain is the best chain in the world. I forgot its, it's, it's details and stuff, but I'll, be, I'll, I'll try my best to put it up on the screen. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, just being able to ride the fastest train in the world and not being able to ride it anywhere else in the world is just amazing. So you have to try it. You can get it from the airport to the train station. So once you land in Shanghai, definitely check that out. Um, how powerful do you think China will be in 10 years? If you haven't heard the previous question, like I said, China is the future of the world. In 10 years, in 10 years, China is going to be powerful. It, it, it is going to be the most powerful country in the world. Believe me. How do you really feel about China? I love China. I don't know how many times I should tell you guys. I love China so much. <laughs> I love China so much. I don't want to go. It's just that this language to me is not my thing. I'm not so good with languages and. Mm, yeah, I love China so much. Everything is here. Like, if you don't know how much I love China, please check out my other video. It's called What I Love About China. You know how much I love China, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely don't forget to check out China Matters if you want more content and if you want to know what they're about. Definitely check out the channel. I'm going to leave everything down below. So yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye Jen.